Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we will learn about monosaccharides. Now, the learning objectives will be What are monosaccharides? What are the basic properties of monosaccharides? To know about different types of monosaccharides and their examples and to know the uses of different types of monosaccharides. So first, what are monosaccharides? Mono, mono means one and we learned that the word saccharon comes from Greece which means sweet or sugar. So single sugar. So monosaccharides are the simplest sugar molecules. They cannot be broken down into simpler substances. So they are the smallest unit which further join together to form big size carbohydrates. Now we learned in carbohydrates that they are polyhydroxyaldehydes. That means they have multiple hydroxyl groups and a functional group which can be aldehyde or a ketone. So monosaccharides can also be categorized on the basis of presence of aldehyde as well as ketones. So they can be aldoses if they have an aldehyde group as their functional group. Now this aldehyde group will be present at carbon number 1. Always the aldehyde group will be present at carbon number 1 and the sugar is called aldoses. Now next is ketoses. Now if the ketone group is present in a sugar, it will be present at carbon number 2. As you can see here in this figure, at carbon number 2, the ketone group is present and the sugar is called ketoses. Example for aldehyde group that is aldoses is glucose and example for ketoses is fructose. So now because of the presence of free aldehyde as well as the ketone group, these monosaccharides have a capacity to reduce car uh, copper. So copper to sulfate present inside the Benedict solution is or reduced to copper 1 oxide. Let us see. So in this test tube, you can see the blue color solution. This blue color solution is Benedict solution which has copper 2 sulfate. Now when sugar is added to this test tube, the color changes to reddish brown. So a red brown precipitate of cuprous oxide is formed. So we can also say that monosaccharides are reducing sugars. Why they are reducing sugars? Because they can reduce copper 2 sulfate to copper 1 oxide. They are sweet in taste and soluble in water, which is another very important property of monosaccharides. Apart from this, the monosaccharides have a general formula of CNH2ON. Now what is N? N varies from 3 to 7. It is the number of carbon atoms which are present in the sugar. So now again comes the classification of monosaccharides. On the basis of number of carbon atoms, present inside the sugar molecule, the monosaccharides can be trioses that is 3 carbon sugar, tetroses that is 4 carbon sugar, pentoses 5 carbon, hexoses 6 carbon and heptoses that is 7 carbon. What is common amongst all of them? O-S-E, O's. So any monosaccharide ends in O's. Let us first discuss trioses. Trioses words indicate it is a three carbon sugar. Now these three carbon sugars are very important for photosynthesis as well as for respiration. The examples of trioses are glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone. Next is tetroses. Tetroses are four carbon sugars. So the example of tetroses is erythrose. Now what are the use of tetrose sugar? It is used in lignin formation and also in pigment like anthocyanin synthesis. What is lignin? Lignin is a structural component of the cell wall 
we said that the carbohydrates are both energy molecules as well as structural molecules. Next, pentoses. Now, these are very important sugars. They are five carbon sugars. The examples are ribose, deoxyribose, xylose and arabinose. So, ribose, we know very important part of ribonucleic acid, which is a genetic material again. And also, it is a component of the energy molecules like ATP and NAD. Again, deoxyribose, it is also a 5-carbon sugar and forms important structural frame of the genetic material DNA. Next important sugar, hexoses. Hexoses is a 6-carbon sugar. Very common, glucose, fructose, galactose, all of them are 6-carbon sugars. So, they have 6-carbon in them and they are very, very important sugars. Why they are important? Glucose, we all know, provides energy to us. So, it is the energy currency of the cell. Why it is called energy currency? Because when glucose, one molecule of glucose is burned, it gives out 273 kilocalories of energy. So, 60% of the body's energy needs are provided by glucose. Next sugar, a 7 carbon sugar is heptose. The example is pseudoheptulose. Now, pseudoheptulose is also a very important sugar because it is involved in biosynthesis of lipids. So, we have categorized monosaccharides. How? On the basis of number of carbon atoms present in the sugar molecule. Thus, to summarize, we can say the monosaccharides are the simplest sugars with general formula of CNH2N. They can be categorized on the basis of number of carbon atoms present in them. Now, most important monosaccharides will be ribose, deoxyribose, glucose and fructose. Fructose is a fruit sugar which is present in different types of fruits. And so, finally, when we say monosaccharides, what do we mean by it? They are the building blocks for all the carbohydrates which we will learn in the later videos. Thank you. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.